beautiful one. This is what you think it is. Eighteen times seven plus two. One hundred and twenty-eight days since my last haircut. Look at this mop. All right, cool. Okay, some of these are a little bit hot, so. Off the bat. If you're new here, this is my storm series. It involves having some um, controlled marbling from white to gray, to dark gray to black, some inlaid yellow clay for lightning, and then I have this kind of cloud rim. White liner. This one turned out great. Now only three of these made it. This was like a, an experiment on folding clay. If I can replicate this approach, this will be called the Flame Series. I imagine having reds and oranges and yellows and blacks in here. It'd be really cool in the Arakomi technique for sure. Nice four-fingered handle. Moving on. This is supposed to have a, a cloud rim. Must not have had enough on there. This one didn't work out as well. I also glaze around the handle so it stays attached just in case. Because this is raw clay on the outside for those of you who don't follow this channel. Hope you're having a good day, by the way. Moving on. I have three of these. Oh, that one turned out okay. Yeah, this one's nice. This is... Oh, yeah. This is a beautiful one. Nice little cloud rim. The cloud doesn't make a lot of sense with the Flame series, but I just did it anyway for consistency. Also glazed around the handle there. Clear inside, so you can actually see the inside and the outside of this Narakomi. That's kind of how it should be. Usually I glaze the inside white because it's hard to scrape inside there because I make these as slabs and I alter them on the wheel. But this one turned out great. This is probably the best one from that batch. Oh yeah, let's go. There's a hole in this glove, so that's fun. There we go, look at that. All three of these together. Looks pretty sweet. These actually have a gray handle, because I had gray colored porcelain for the handle and gray colored porcelain for the foot too. This one turned out lovely. Now this is my new porcelain recipe. It's a little bit of a brighter, whiter porcelain and these colors tend to show up well. Oh yeah. Sorry, I'm just marveling at this one. Put the foot on this one too. When you throw a colored clay, the foot sometimes gets twisted in a beautiful way. And then we have one more storm mug. These look better with clear over them, but this is my old clay. These are actually, all these ones you're seeing, these tall mugs, are the last of my first porcelain clay. This one here, I make myself. <laughs> we'll talk about this some other day. This one's funny. I'm keeping the chatter to a minimum today. Just got a lot more colored clay to unload, some Narakomi stuff, some agate ware, a lot of colored porcelain. Itty bitty nest test. All right. Get to this later. Nothing to show for that yet. Look at this, guys. <clears throat> this is sweet. This is what you think it is. I'm working on making knives. Got the holes in the handle, full tang. It's about an eighth inch thick, multiple clays. Still gotta grind it and make a handle for it, but whoo-hoo, that looks awesome. What do you think? Have you ever seen a handmade ceramic knife? Let me know. They warped a little bit, but they warped in the right direction. They warped this way, which is fine. As long as it doesn't warp this way, this is straight as an arrow, it looks like. Let's keep going. Keep going, keep going. Check this out. This was a very old piece of head sitting around. I, I decided to carve through it, because when you make agate ware or marbled clay, and you carve through it, it really exposes those layers. Really cool. Mm, this was a pink, the 
pink did not survive, it looks like. The white survived. I actually glazed, I actually glazed only the area in between the stripe. This stripe is raw black and pink, and the white area is actually glazed. It took a lot of time. It <laughs> did not pay off, but you know what? That's a tester for. Here's a green one. The green also didn't survive. So it was a lot cooler once it was green. Still kind of cool with the zigzag. Nice white liner glaze in there. More pieces. Oh, here's a nice big one. Love this piece. Woohoo! Look at this. Pardon the sound. White on the bottom, white on the top, white liner inside. This one I, I trimmed through and carved through a lot on the wheel. This is the definition of agate wear. It's beautiful. Sedimentary rock, awesome. As I refired this one, this is from the last cone loading. One spot inside I found out didn't have enough glaze, so I had to refire it. I love this one. Nice tall Pilsner glass for your for your agua, for your water. All right, moving on. This one too had a spot in the bottom. It's hard once you sand. If you're sanding your own clay, guys, keep this in mind. If you sand it and clay gets down in there, dust, you don't get it out. You can bisque fire it, you can wash it, but it tends to stick. The best advice I can give you if you sand the outside of your colored clay to reveal the colors like I do, is get a compressor or really kind of get all of the dust out of the bottom of these pieces because they get trapped where the bottom flares out. And it's hard to get your, you can't get your hand down there because your hand's too big, so nice. I fixed that one nicely too. I add some more glaze, reglaze it, done. All right. <laughs> Here's a throwback, you guys. Who was around on the channel when these were made? The bacon cups. I had three of these laying around bisqueware. Finally glazed them. Outside raw, bottom raw, vintage JF handwritten stamp. Inside, just white. You can see it's a little bit of a like transparent, semi-transparent white mat. This was a Narakomi bacon pattern. It has 1% red, 5% red, and then 10% red added by weight. Those are the stripes that you see. Sometimes they split after the glaze. This one split pretty bad. You can see that right there. That's part of it. There's an artist. I'll put his name right on the screen here. His name is Cody Hoyt. He is an Ericomi artist. Incredible work. And he just accepts these splits. He doesn't make a lot of functional work, so it's okay for his work. It's more sculptural. Um, but the inside is fine. I love them all together. What do you think? Moving on. In this kiln. <laughs> Whatever. Just, we'll, we'll just deal with it. In this kiln, there are seven porcelain clay tests. My last firing, a couple firings ago, didn't go so well. I've been trying to formulate a new porcelain recipe that fires more to the more to cone six versus like a higher cone five. And so I have seven throwing tests. I have seven. Uh, translucency test, so we'll get the lights off, we'll have it glow, and I have a couple of tests for a clear and for a white. So, And then I also have coasters at the very bottom of this, um, some marbled cosmic coasters. I'll put a guide in the description of this video so you can skip ahead if you want to, but it's kind of cool seeing what seven different recipes look like with the same glazes. I'm excited too. And just wait till we get to the glowing test, it's gonna be sweet. I'm just gonna unload this whole shelf as is. And that's why you test. Number seven, disgusting. Moving on. Last but not least, coasters. <clears throat> These are remnants from those Flame Series mugs you saw earlier. So I take the extra Narakomi scraps and I roll them out. It's quite a bit of work actually to get this to be thin enough. This one warped a little bit, probably not sellable. Here's a nice one. This nice little coaster. Narakomi coaster, marble clay coaster. Now these ones I glazed. I glazed the outsides of these, seeing how it would look. Um, this clay looked better with glaze. My clay, because it's translucent porcelain, it gets very, very vitrified at temperature. This is mine with no glaze. See how like, dark and rich it is? This is a, a lightning series, storm series. The block didn't work out, but the coasters did. It's pretty sweet. I like that. 
This is a little bit more of a messier coaster. And then we got two more. Turned out great. And then this is a test of a new clay color combination where the pink and the green burned out differently. So that's why you test. Black, gray, pink, blue, green. Pinks are hard to get. Reds will typically stay and show up, but um, I've been told and I've experienced firsthand, especially right here, that pinks in clay are hard to get to show up. Bright greens too. By the way, it's good to see you all. It's been a while. I'll do this for all of these. There's a white glaze and there's a clear glaze on top. And then it's plain in the middle. So you can see very thin on the edge. You can see the, the light not, Ooh, wow, there goes the sun. There you go. So number one, 45% kaolin, 30 nafsi, 25 silica. Oh, also for all these recipes, 2% V-gum as a plasticizer. Test number one. Number two, and that is 40 nafsi, 25. Ooh, this one's even better, I think. 45 kaolin, 25 nafsi, 5% gersley borate. Come on, focus. Yeah, so everyone, that 5% grossy borate really increases like the maturity and the fluxing of this. You can see the light, I think, is a little bit more spread out, like a little bit more penetrating of the surface, especially near the edge. This recipe, compared to the first one, has 5% less nepheline cyanide, in addition, 5% grossly borate, or greatly borate or Gillespie borate. They're similar, but different. Number three. 45% China clay, 25% Minspar 200, 5% Gersley borate, 25% silica. Not flexed as much. You get a little bit near the edge, but I think it dies off pretty quick, don't you think? And then none. You can barely even see this is right against the light. So Minspar must not be as powerful of a flux as Nephilene cyanide. You get a little bit. I'll tell you right now though, if I'm building a translucent clay recipe, I'm not using Minspar based on these results. It's still an eighth inch thick, or only, but almost zero translucency. Obviously the end's fine, because the end's like paper thin. Number four, 45% China clay, 20% nephsi, 5% nursery morate, 30% silica. So this should have a higher like maturity temperature, a higher maturity. Um, as for translucency, looks like it's okay. I think there's more translucency in the end than compared to the one just before this. So back to Nefsi as a better flux, I feel. Really nice near this end. A little bit through here. To the number, isn't that cool? That's a four, not an H. Nice translucency for sure. Number five. 20% EPK, 25% China clay, 25 Nefsi, 5 Grossi Borite, 25% silica. So. Higher silica to increase the firing temperature, a little bit of grossy borate, a little bit of nephsi, and then honestly to save money and to increase plasticity, I included EBK. So translucency is okay. A little bit of translucency on that side. A ton over here. Decent. Through the clay and the glazes, decent translucency, decent translucency. I don't think it's any less translucent than the other ones with similar flux levels. The EPK, I think, has these black spots that you see, might be from the EPK. EPK has more iron in it. China clay has less iron. China clay is like the second whitest, or Growlig I used. It's one of the second whitest kaolins. There's like Halostonite or something like that from New Zealand. It's the whitest kaolin there is. But that could be why there's speckles. I don't know. Number six, 45% China clay, 30% Nefsi, 5% grossy borate, 20% silica. Yeah, so you have decent translucency. It's okay. Obviously really good at the edge where it's paper thin. Near the middle it's decent and then it trails off pretty quick. I feel like number one or two is better than this. Six, the edge. 
Get the metal. And then number seven. <laughs> this one's so gross. Number seven looks like it's made out of putty. Um, 45 China Clay, 15 Nefsi, 15% Gersey Borate, 25% Silica. So that extra Gersey Borate brought the temperature way down. You can see it, right? It's like, it's like stone, it's like rubble. Translucency seems like it's whatever. Actually, it seems like it's not even that great, if I'm being honest. It's okay. Number one, I feel like was pretty good. Yeah, one has like a decent translucency, a lot at the end, but decent back here. Number two, I thought was pretty good too. Yeah, see, like two has a pretty decent translucency back here. A lot right there. Three was the Minspar, right? Yeah, see, Minspar, look at the difference. You use Minspar instead of Nephilim Cyanide, look at the translucency, like none. Some, two on the left, three on the right. Terrible comparison. Same amounts here, okay? Number two on top has Nephilim Cyanide in it. Number three on the bottom has Minspar 200 in it as a flux. Everything else, even those amounts of Minspar and Nephilim Cyanide, it's the same. Look at the glowing difference. Middle, much brighter. Hmm, good to know. That's skill number seven. Thanks for watching. Be well, be safe, and I'll see you in the next one.